please turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of John. I would like to read from the first chapter of the Gospel according to John. John chapter 1. I would like for us to look at the first nine verses. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 9. The subject that's on my heart this morning is the subject of light, L-I-G-H-T, light. When I was in high school, my parents bought a world book encyclopedia. I don't guess young people know what encyclopedias are, but when uh, if you go back 50 years, most every family that wanted their children to be well educated, they bought a set of encyclopedias. Along with that uh, set of encyclopedias, there were uh, two dictionaries called the World Book Encyclopedia Dictionary. One of that covered the first half of the words and the second book covered the second half. I love to look at that World Book Encyclopedia Dictionary and look at definitions in that Encyclopedia Dictionary. That's not a religious organization that wrote that book but that book in many many definitions goes to the word of God and uses God's word as a reference to help us understand the meaning of words so I looked up the word light L-I-G-H-T in the world book encyclopedia dictionary And here are some of the definitions. I'm just going to mention four. The first one says that light is that which makes vision possible. Light is that which makes vision possible. Without light, even if you have perfect eyesight, if you don't have light, then you can't see. So light makes vision possible. Light, now this is something I was thinking about this morning. Light travels at 186,270, listen carefully now, 186,270 miles per second. Think about that. 186,270 miles per second. Now, I want one of the children to tell me, I want you to tell me the speed of sound. What's the speed of sound? They don't teach that in school, do they? Surely you know that. Uh, The speed of sound is 1,100 feet per second. I want you to, I was meditating on that this morning. 186,000, about 186,000 miles per second versus 1,100 feet per second. Think about how much faster light travels than sound. That's the reason if you're uh, a long ways away from something and you, you watch a train wreck or a train stop, you can see it happening before the sound ever gets there. If you're a long ways away from someone, you might see them shoot a gun and the sight and the act takes place, but it's a while before the sound gets to you. What I was thinking about this morning is since Christ is the light of the world, and the Bible says God is light, I thought about how much faster God is, Christ, the living word, how much faster the living word is, than the written word of the preached word. The sound of the gospel, the sound of the word of God, is very limited in what it covers. Do you realize that? But the light, the living word of God, is everywhere, all over the world. Jesus is all over the world. The living word of God, the light of God, is everywhere at the same time. But the gospel is not preached in all different places. Everybody doesn't hear the sound of the preached word of God, but every child of God has heard and seen the light of Jesus Christ. 
thought about this also. And by, by the way, this is all in this World Book Encyclopedia Dictionary. It says that light is called day and darkness is called night. You know where they got that from? Genesis, Genesis chapter 1. And the light God called day and the darkness he called night. And then whenever it continues with the third definition, it says, as it's giving the definitions of light, the third definition is, God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. And then it gives you the scripture reference, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This is in the World Book Encyclopedia Dictionary. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. So you see in this definition of light, they go back to the beginning of the world and they say light is called day and darkness is called night. And then it talks about now God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And then the fourth definition says that light is defined as a shining figure or a great example for others to follow. Individuals like Jesus, are called light. And in fact, Jesus says that true Christians are the what of the world? They're the light of the world. And so people that are living godly lives, they're called the light of the world, just as Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And brethren, we're just a reflection of the light of Jesus. We're not on the same level as Jesus at all. But I do want you to know that even in the World Book Encyclopedia Dictionary, it says that, that people that are giving a great example for others to live, they're called light. So I'm just amazed sometimes when I read that encyclopedia, that World Book Encyclopedia Dictionary, I'm amazed as I read the definitions that most of those definitions, there are many of them at least, that give scriptural references. Now, if you will, look in your, your Bibles at John chapter 1. The Word of God says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Who is the Word in that verse? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that, come down to verse 14. The Bible says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word that's being spoken of is Jesus Christ. Now listen carefully to verse 4. As it speaks about the Word, it then refers to him. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. I want you to think about that just a moment. In Jesus, in Christ, was, listen carefully, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Do you know what you have when you have Jesus? You have the light. You have life, but you have the light. If you're walking in the light as he's in the light, you have Jesus with you. And when you have Jesus with you, you have the light of life. My brethren, you have, when you have Jesus with you, you have eternal life. You have the abundant life. You have a life of joy. You have a life of peace. You have a life of righteousness. You have a life, brethren, that is a marvelous, wonderful life when you have the life which is in Christ Jesus. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I want to hasten to say also that without him, instead of having light, what do you have? You have darkness. And so my world can be full of darkness, or my world can be full of light. And the only thing that makes a difference in whether I have the light of life versus the darkness of life is if Jesus is there in my life manifesting himself to me. I have the light of life, which is 
Jesus Christ. Now when I have the light of life, I don't have to wonder about which way to go and what to do in my life because the light of life helps me to be able to see which way to go. For example, the Word of God says that we're not to lean to our own understanding, but in all, way, in all our ways we are to acknowledge Him, and then what will He do? He will direct our paths. So when we have Him, we have the, what's He called here? The light of life. And he shows us which way to go and he shows us what to do, what to do, and he holds us up. Listen, brethren, in the midst of death, you can have the light of life. If Jesus is there, you're going to have the light of life, no matter how thick the darkness is all around you, no matter how much evil is around you, no matter how much death is around you, in the midst of all darkness, you can have the light, the light of life. So verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And I ask you this morning, are there times in your life that you have nothing but darkness? Are there times that, on the other hand, are there times that in the midst of your darkness, you have the light of life? As you have surgery, and, and, and you have pain, and you have problems, and you have troubles, in the midst of all that darkness, you know what dispels that darkness? One word, give me one word. What gets rid of all that darkness? Light. Which has more power, light or darkness? Light. Did you know darkness cannot, it can't ever stay present when light is there? And you don't have to create darkness. Darkness is something that's always there, but you need the light. And it's in Jesus. In Him was life. And that life was the light of men. Now listen to verse 5. Verse 5 says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 6 talks about John the Baptist. It says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Now, John the Baptist, did he have a, did John the Baptist have a lot of people following him? Did a lot of people think John the Baptist was the light? And so John the Apostle, as he's writing about John the Baptist, he says now, John was not that light. John the Baptist was not the light. All John the Baptist was doing was bearing witness of the light. Verse, verse 8 says, he was not that light. John the Baptist was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Brethren, Jesus is the light of the world. He is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. God is light. And in God, in Him, we have the... Give me three words. We have the light of life. We have the light in Christ. We have the light of life. Now, turn to John chapter 3. We're going to spend most of our time this morning in the, in the Gospel of John. But in John chapter 3, John writes a lot about what Jesus says about light. In John chapter 3, listen please, beginning in verse 19. Jesus is speaking right after he's talked about God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Brethren, we need to have everlasting life. That everlasting life comes from believing on him. In John chapter 3, beginning in verse 19, the word of God says, And this is the condemnation, that light is come, who's speaking right here? Jesus. Who's speaking? Yes, Jesus is speaking and he says, this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Why didn't evil men like to be in the presence of Jesus? He exposed their sin. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden and they had sinned, when did they recognize that they were naked? 
It's when God began to shine. They had sinned and their nakedness became conscious to them. And they hid themselves and they tried to cover themselves. I want you to know, brethren, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. On the other hand, when people are living right and their deeds are good, instead of despising the light, they draw near to the light, they love the light, they're happy to be in the presence of the light because their good deeds are manifest. But when I'm evil, I run from the light. I run from Jesus. You ever run from Jesus? Have you ever run from Jesus? I have many times in my life. I, I, have you ever wanted to hide from Jesus? I've wanted to hide from G Jesus during this past week. When I lose my temper and when I say things I ought not to say, I'm not talking about cursing, I'm just talking about saying things in the wrong spirit and in the wrong way and wrong manner. You know what I want to do then when the light shines? You know what I want to do? I want to hide. I want to hide. Man, I want to, I want to get away from Jesus. I want to just bow down, cower down and hide. I want to be like those in Revelation chapter 6, I believe, that, that when the light began to shine, that they began to call to the rocks and the mountains, fall on us and hide us. Hide us from Jesus. Hide us from the light. Why? Because when our works are evil, when our works are darkness, men who are walking in darkness, we, men who are following the flesh instead of the spirit, they love darkness rather than light. And this is the condemnation that Christ Jesus, the light, came into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were what? Evil. evil. Verse 20 says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Is that true of hating Jesus? Those that are doing evil, do they hate Jesus? You too. You do. When you're doing evil, you run from Jesus. Those that do evil, he says... He that doeth, he that doeth, everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light. Is that true of you hating Jesus, running from Jesus? Yes. Don't want to be in his presence. Is it true of you not wanting to be around the word of God when you're doing evil? The light, the glorious light of the gospel. Do you run from the word of God when your deeds are evil? Certainly you do. Do you run from the people of God who are the light of the world when your deeds are evil? Yes, you do. Now, there are some people that are so bold and arrogant, they want to infiltrate the light. And so they will go into places where there are people that claim to be the church of Jesus Christ, and they will manifest their evil deeds, and they, they're bold in living ungodly in the presence of evil people. And the only people who are living evil that will ever feel comfortable in a church is when a church has conformed to the world, and the church is full of darkness, and then the world evil people in the world can feel comfortable in a church when the church is not shining her light. Does that make sense to you? Well, you know what will happen when people are living evil lives and they come into the church that's the light of the world? You know what happens when people come into the church of Jesus Christ who is the light of the world? You know what happens when people that are living ungodly come among a body of people that are trying to uphold the banner and standard of truth and righteousness? They won't stay long. They'll hate you. They will hate you. Why? Because of this condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. If evil people can feel comfortable around you, it's because they are not seeing any light in your life. I'm going to repeat that one more time. If evil people can feel comfortable around you, it's because your light is not shining. Because... Evil people cannot be in the presence of light. Verse 21 says, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. See, he that does what? He that doeth truth. He that's trying to live right. What do they do? They come to the light. He that doeth truth cometh to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Listen, brother, not come around and say, Look what I did. But come around and say, 
My deeds are wrought in God. It's God who worketh in me both to will and to do of His good pleasure. They want to come to the light and say, God, to you be the glory because the only good that's in me is the good that God put in me. The only light in me is the good, the light that God put in me. And so why do they come to the light? So that they can give glory to God. What's the condemnation? That light came into the world. Who came into the world? Who came into the world? Jesus did. And men loved darkness rather than light. But those that were doing good and keeping the commandments of God, they went to Jesus. They ran to him. They drew near to him. And he drew near to them because their lights were shining. They loved that great light. Look in your Bibles now at John chapter 8. Turn in your Bibles please a few pages past where we're reading John chapter 8. <clears throat> Again, Jesus now. I know that John's recording the words of the gospel according to John, but he's recording the words of Jesus in John chapter 3 that we just read. John chapter 8, <clears throat> again, he is, he is uh, giving us the words of Jesus in John chapter 8 and verse 12. Listen carefully. John chapter 8 verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Now what had he told them earlier? Was there another occasion where Jesus said, Ye are the light of the world? Yes, he did. Always remember this. We have the sun. <laughs> I want you to think about this. This just came to me. Uh, I know one reason is the distance, but is there another reason that men have never landed on the sun besides the distance to the sun? Is there another reason men have never landed on the sun? It's too hot. It's too hot. That's right. And in our natural state, brethren, you can't get that close to Jesus. The light's too bright. The heat's too hot. What a wonderful blessing it is. Now, men, my daddy didn't ever think men really landed on the moon. He, think they, he thinks they set up some kind of scene out there in the desert. I saw it. Doesn't matter whether you think they did or didn't land on the moon. My point is, uh, theoretically at least, and I think realistically, men did land on the moon. And the moon is just a reflection of the light of the sun. That's all the moon is. There is no light in the moon. And there is no light in you except the reflection of the sun. And so though I cannot land on the sun and be in his literal presence in this world, one day I will be, but in this life, in this flesh, I cannot literally be in his presence continuously I can be in your presence. I can land on the moon. I can be in the presence of my brothers and sisters in Christ whose lights are shining. Do you follow that now? John 8 verse 12. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. <laughs> now listen. Jesus says, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. There's several reasons for that, but I just want to say it is impossible to follow Jesus and walk in darkness. One way or another, you're walking and I'm walking, we're either following him or we're following the devil. One of the two. No middle road. I'm either following the Lord or I'm following the devil every day. And it says, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of of life. Now tell me again now. What is the light of life? What is the light of life? He says this is the promise he's give, giving here. If you follow me you'll have the light of life. You'll have the light of life. I tell you brethren I've been with several people. I've been with a number of people that while they were dying and when they died I had the light of life, the glory of God shine. <laughs> and not only when people have been dying, but I've had the privilege of being around some people that are living, that I have had the light of life as I'm with them in their presence. I have, I have the light of life. 
the cause of Jesus shining in their lives. I have the light of life. And we need to thank the Lord every day that Jesus has given us this promise in John chapter 8 verse 12 when he says, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but you'll have... I'm not talking about dying and going to heaven. I'm talking about right now while you're living. You will have the light of life. You'll have that righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You'll be in the kingdom of heaven which is a city of light. And we have no need of the sun or the moon or the stars. Because Christ is the light in that city. And I have the light of life. <laughs> and nothing shall offend those who have the light of life. This great boldness when I feel the light of life, when I feel Jesus, I have no fear. I don't fear I don't fear the devil. I don't fear all the enemies of God. I don't fear anyone when I have the light of life. He that followeth me, Jesus says, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Go with me to uh, John chapter 12. Listen carefully. Jesus is going all around. He's talking about, I'm the light of the world. Men love darkness rather than light. This is the condemnation that light came into the world. Men love darkness rather than light. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And then in John chapter 12, listen to verses 35 and 36. Listen carefully. It's a beautiful picture here. Well, kind of beautiful, but kind of scary. In John chapter 12, listen to verses 35 and 36. Now, I want you to know, literally, he was talking about him being here in the earth. But I want you to see another picture there. John chapter 12, verses 35 and 36. The word of God says, Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. What was he talking about when he said, yet a little while the light is with you? He's talking about in the flesh, in his body. He was only going to be here a little while. We're going to see a spiritual lesson in just a minute. But that's, I want you to remember first just the literal lesson. He was only going to be on this earth a little while. A little while the light is with you. Walk while ye have the light. <coughs> Lest darkness come upon ye. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light that ye may be the children of light. Now, that was true of these people. And there were Jews that did believe Jesus was the Christ. And they had the light of life. And they became, they became the children of light by following the light. They became manifest children of God while they were following the light. Now listen carefully. Same thing. Oh, I didn't finish. Listen to the rest of verse 36. <laughs> These things spake Jesus and... What's the next word? Departed. Departed and did hide himself from them. Now, see, he told them, he says, Now a little while you're going to have the light. and Then the light's going to leave and you're not going to have the light with you. So he says, Walk well, while you have the light. And what's the next thing he did? He departed and hid himself. Was he immediately gone? I'm not talking about when he died. I'm talking about right there. That day he was gone, but there were some of them who had the light of life. Even though his physical presence was not there, they still had the light of life. And I want to say to all of you today, I want to say to all of you today, you must, the word in here says, walk while you have the light. Walk while you have the light. Behind my house I have a shed. On the back side of the shed I've got a little place I like to go back there. And in that little cubby hole there's a light switch back there. And I need some flashlights out there and in the house. You know a man leaves flashlights all the time. I, but they do like flashlights. Two things I really like to get. I like to get flashlights and I, get, I like to get pocket knives. Uh, and, and pretty often I forget to have a flashlight out there and I turn the light off out there and unless there's a full moon when I turn that light off listen 
You know, if you've ever, I met very few people back there, but if you've ever been back there, you know it is dangerous to walk back there without a flashlight. Because there's a bunch, if you ever need anything, don't go to the hardware store first. Call me. I've probably got it. And probably my son-in-law said I've got a hundred of any one thing that I have one of. But my point is that when I turn that light off in that little room back there, and I start walking, the first few steps I'm pretty well sure what's there, but I have fallen back there many times because, brethren, when the light is out, when you don't have any light, you're going to do some falling. And that's not pleasant. Especially when you fall over a bunch of things that you don't really need to begin with. And you fall and you hurt yourself. Not just from the fall, but from landing on all those things. I want you to know, brethren, that if we don't get close to Jesus, He says, walk while you have the light. What's He going to do? What is Jesus going to do in your life? Are there times He's going to cut the light out in your life? Are the times he's going to hide himself from you? Yeah. But, but if you've been walking in the light, as he's in the light, guess what's going to happen as you're going along? What's going to happen? He's going to still be lighting the way. Jesus will still be lighting the way. And not only will Jesus light the way, the word will light the way. And that's the reason the psalmist said, Thy word is a... A lamp unto my feet. Now a flashlight shines in one direction. You know what a lamp does? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. It shines in all directions. And so when I'm holding a lamp, when I'm walking in the light, I'm holding the lamp, the word of God. Guess what happens to the people behind me? How many of you have ever followed somebody in the woods that all, all they had was a flashlight and you were behind them back there? You know what I like for them to do occasionally? Shine it back there. Let me see a little bit. Don't just leave me, leave me following you in the dark. Because they'll step over something and boom, I get there and I fall over it. Walk while you have the light. I want all of you to know the light's going to depart. The light's going to hide himself. And the only way you'll be able to keep going is if you have been... See, what does Jesus say in John 8, 12? He says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Even when Jesus hides himself, you'll still have the light of life. And you'll still be able to go forward, even though you can't see him right then. Job experienced that in Job chapter 23, I think verses 8, 9, and 10. He talked about, you know, I see him working on the left hand, right hand. I can't find him, but I know he's here. And when he's finished with me, I'm going to come forth as go. Total confidence in God because he had the, thank you, he had the light of life. He had Jesus. Go with me to Romans chapter 13 very quickly. <clears throat> Romans chapter 13. Now, while you're turn, turning to Romans chapter 13, I, I want to remind everybody here that... <clears throat> The light is called, what? what's the light called in uh, Genesis 1? The light is called day. day and the darkness is called night. Can you be in darkness? I'm talking about children of God, born of the Spirit of God. Can you be in darkness? Can God withdraw himself from you and leave you? In fact, he will, the scripture teaches us in Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30, that he will cast you into outer darkness. Into outer darkness. Where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. God does that to his people when they do not follow him. If they follow him, they will have the light of life. If they don't follow him, he will cast them into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. You remember in Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18, the word of God says, The wrath of God is revealed from God, from heaven, against ungodly men. In verse, verse 21 of that chapter it says they don't like to think about God. They don't like to retain God in their knowledge. And for this reason God gave them up to their vile affections. And the scripture says in that passage and their foolish heart was, who knows the next word that, their foolish heart was what? Darkened. Their foolish heart was darkened. Did you know the only way a heart can be darkened is if it's had what? Light. You can't darken a dark heart. 
a foolish heart, a child of God's heart can be darkened. You don't want to think about God. You don't want to follow God. You don't want to serve God. You don't want to keep His commandments. Big trouble is coming. Amen. Big trouble. On the other hand, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall have. That's a promise from Jesus. He that followeth me shall have the light of life. In him is life. And in him is no darkness at all. In him is life. And that life is the light of the world. Now then, we're not going to go to Romans. Let's go in closing to 1 John. Go to the end of the same writer that we started with, the Gospel of John. But then 1 John, we've got three little books at the end of the New Testament. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Please follow this carefully in closing. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, beginning in verse 5. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. <clears throat> the Word of God says, oh by the way, verse 4 says, These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. <laughs> write these things to you so your joy can be full. He says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Are there many children of God that walk in darkness but think they're still walking with Jesus? I hear that quite often. I hear people say, I'm just as close to Jesus as I've ever been. And they're further away than I've And I've known them when they were really close to Jesus. But they're deceived by the devil. They're following a different light. The devil and his angels are transformed into messengers of light. And you can follow the wrong light and be led down a path of destruction. So he says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. I thank God that when Jesus came into the world, he came to save us from our sins. We said last week that not only he saved us from our sins, but he saves us day by day. And I'm also thankful that when he came into the world, light came into the world, a special light came into the world. And I'm glad that light is still with us today. I'm glad that even though he went to the grave, he rose again. I'm glad that on several occasions, well, first occasion I know of is in Genesis chapter 1, God said, Four words, what was it? Let there be light. Was that the light of the sun, the moon, and the stars? No, the sun, the moon, and the stars were not created until the fourth day. When God said in Genesis chapter 1, let there be light, that was the glorious light of God that shined back there. On the Mount of Transfiguration, did Jesus shine as a bright light there? In, in uh, Revelation chapter 21, who's the light of the city? The one that lights the city? It's the Lamb of God. All of that speaking of God being the light. I pray that God will help us today to rejoice that we have light. It's by the grace of God that we still have that light. Amen. Work while you have the light because darkness is coming. May God help us is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen.